I'll ask our award winner to come on up. Uh, the Paul Olivia Zitsiewicz Award was very graciously funded by Paul and his wife Barbara. Although he taught at the college, the university level uh, in his career, pre-college teaching, high school teaching was very close to Paul's heart. Uh, and he wrote numerous textbooks for K-12 education. They were a labor of love for him. So he and his wife chose to make this award part of their legacy uh, to AAPT. But that was not the only gifts that he gave to this organization. When he passed away earlier this year, Paul was serving the second of his term as secretary for our organization, which is also a labor of love and much work. So we very much appreciate this award and all his other contributions to AAPT. And I'd like to ask for just a few, a brief moment of, of silence in Paul's memory. The Paul Zitsiewicz Award for Excellence in Pre-College Teaching uh, is presented to Thomas E. Hack in recognition of his career-long concern concern for and attention to quality education at the pre-college level. And in high, um, a high school physics teacher from Seattle, Washington, Hack earned his BA and MED from the University of Washington. He began teaching in 1976 at Mercer Island High School. He taught at several high schools and at Edmonds Community College before taking a position at Issaquah High School in 1996. He's a National Board Certified Teacher. The Washington section of the American Association of Physics Teachers honored Huff with an Outstanding High School Teacher Award October 9, 2010 at its state meeting. This is the first time the chapter has given the award and it will now be called the Tom Half Award in honor of its first recipient. Half epitomizes the qualities most desired in a teacher. He is an enthusiastic, expert teacher. He explains physics so that the subject comes alive for students inspiring them to seek and grasp the deeper level of understanding. He truly understands that his job is not only to teach science concepts to his students, rather to instill in them a curiosity and an enthusiasm for learning science. He is an effective mentor, providing opportunities for students to interact with physics educators and physicists at local and national meetings. He immerses himself in his physics classes. He ran his AP physics for nine years after school hours so all students in the district would have an opportunity to participate. His passing rate was well over 98% on the AP exam, and his students did exceptionally well at the college level. He consistently applies for grants so that he can keep the curriculum up to date with new textbooks and supplies. He supports his students with personal letters and their college applications, and supports their efforts to obtain summer internships after graduation. Half noted, when it is all said and done, the bottom line, whether we build a new building or buy a pencil, it's all about the kids. Bottom line. What?
And finally, I want to take uh, this time to thank a very, very dear friend of mine. Matter, matter of fact, I think, I think what I'll do, I'll tell you how I met this dear friend of mine. I was walking, walking down the hall at the university, and there's a bunch of physics posters on the wall. And I had just gotten out of uh, my second year of physics at a lecture. I'm kind of looking at the poster, you know, and, you know who's doing what, uh, their research, and we long time ago, you know, kind of pausing this. And this person comes up to me and says to me, are you a physics student? And I said, well, yeah, I just came out of physics 221 down the hallway. You know, I do not know this person from Adam. I've never met this person before in my life. Because they were, who is this person? You know? The other person says, are you a good student? <laughs> are you smart? <laughs> and so, and so I started thinking in my head, oh, you know, I'm at a major university. Do my physics work. Just got out of my class. I got A's. I started thinking about my my history. You know, like you know, when I was in high school, I was at New York State reading exam. I did really well on that. And then uh, you know, I had to take the achievement test, and I did really well on that. And, you know, did really well. Blah blah blah. And all that sort of nonsense. So I said, Yeah, I'm really good. <laughs> and goes, well, do you mind if we ask you any, some questions? And I said, well, sure. Well, I got an afternoon free. So the person drags me down to the physics lab. And in the physics lab, you walk into this room, there's a bunch of fat physics gadgets and gizmos, you know, inclined planes and blocks and tracks and all that stuff that everybody, you know, if you're in physics, knows all about. I'll never forget one was they had one pulley down here and another pulley over here, and it was driven by a motor, and, the, and there was a string on it, and the, the string is going around and around and around a circle, and every 10 centimeters they had like a red dot on it. So the bottom strings are going that way, the other strings are going that way, and underneath this, underneath that track was, uh, underneath that, the, that string going around was a, a track with the you roll marbles on. Then the, uh, that person had, the graduate students started asking me those questions like, when does the ball bearing on the track underneath have the same velocity as the string going that way? And how does the ball's velocity that's going this way on the track underneath the string compare with the velocity of the string going this way? Hmm, thinking about that. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, wait a minute, you know, where's the G sine theta minus mu G cosine theta? I'm thinking of this physics. Well, you know, where's the, some of the torques and all those equations that we were so familiar with? There wasn't any of that. They were asking me these hard, hard questions, conceptual questions. I learned a valuable lesson that day. First thing I learned is that I didn't know anything about physics, not a blessed thing. The second thing that I learned is that for the first couple to several years of my time at the university, I was hiding my ignorance of physics and chemistry and mathematics. Oh, I could, you know, do the fancy arithmetic and, you know, differentiate and integrate with the best of them. I could do that. But I, I was getting by on that and not really understanding the conceptual nature of physics did not understand that. It was that day that I was introduced into something really hard to do, and I was thinking. And that was my first day of meeting my dear friend, my colleague, Dr. Lillian McDermott. Lillian, if you're here today, my hat's off to you. I want a round of applause.
the very first thing I want to talk about is being friendly. When I first started teaching, there was this saying, don't smile until Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> or be tough on the very first day of class, they'll learn better that way. That's, that's absolute nonsense. That is absolute nonsense. I mean, on the very first day of school, when I see those kids, which are only the first day of class, only 10 minutes long, you get to take 10. I meet those kids at the door and I'm smiling. I'm introducing myself and having a good time with it. Right from the get-go. Learning the, trying to learn their names and you know having some fun with it. Being friendly. I get them involved in doing things right away. And in our course, you know, the very first thing we talk about is factor label method. Factor label method. We, we know what that all is. You know, you know, meters per second, change it to centimeters per hour, whatever it is. And we talk about proximal centauri. And I, I, I pick it, uh, a student's name that I happen to know, if, you know, because I, maybe I know of them through reputation, I have a family member, and I go, you know, Mary, you know, where were you born? And they said, well, I'm born a Swedish hospital. I said, no, Mary, your parents told you that you were born at Swedish hospital in Seattle? I mean, that's actually not true. I talked to your mom this morning. Really? You talked to my mom? Oh, yeah. You know, how long are you married? 17. 17 years ago, your parents were in the, was it this, this movement, and you were actually born in a field in eastern Washington. They were really, like, connecting with nature. And when you were born, they held you up to the cosmos. They said, this is my daughter, Mary. Mary, welcome to the cosmos. And of course, you know, it goes on and on and on and on from there. And we talk about, you know, well, there was a guy on the side of the field watching you be born. Do you think they saw you at the moment you were born? Or to take a little time? Mary, what do you think? There was another guy that was 17 light years away, Mary. He has a very good telescope. What do you think he sees? Another person is looking at you at 10 years and Mary looked in the story about, oh, Mary, what were you doing in the seventh grade? Blah, 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 blah. And it goes on, on, on. The kids get, that the Mary becomes the center of the attention in a real friendly and fun way. I like to hang out after school. That's not even in the classroom, but I hang out after school and go visit the kids. In our, in our school, we have a ukulele club. I mean, I have this ukulele club because I had students that were playing the ukulele. Now, you know, a lot of in high school, a lot of people go to you know, the major things like football. But I tend to go to some of the things that are less popular just to see the students. The ukulele club, the chess club, even the cross country club. I would cheer those students up because I'm showing them that I'm supporting them even outside of the classroom. I have a, I have a student recently, it was actually last year, and a student, uh, this student was doing great things for me. And, I had, and a colleague said, man, I, I call the kid Joe. Joe, it's just a problem in class, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe that Joe's not learning, he misbehaves. And I had the same kid, I said, it's doing great for me. So I suggested to the teacher, I said, have you ever gone over to the robotic society and watched Joe work and just talk to him out there? And see what Joe's doing outside? I said, well, no, I have never done that. I said, I suggest you do that. Spend some time with Joe in school in a non-threatening environment on his ground. And I'll now I'll never forget what, the, the, what that teacher said to me. That's not my contract. <laughs> that's what the teacher said, that's not my contract. I have a home at 246. That's when I cleaned the building. The society was meet till 3 o'clock. I also entrust with students things that are very personal. And I share it to them with personal stories and personal information. And this is all, this is all sketchy. Every one of my students has my cell phone number. They all have my personal cell phone number. And I tell this to the parents. Every one of my parents have my personal cell phone number. And I've been doing that for 30 years. <laughs> 